Well, I'll be talking about specifically revitalizing American cities, and in this case, Gary, Indiana. And I'm talking about a new model for revitalizing our cities, a new financial model. I'm not going to be talking about buildings. I'm going to be talking about entire cities. And that's what I do. After I left uh, SOM in 2010, I started my own company, Peter Ellis New Cities, to design cities because, frankly, very few people knew how to do it. And I was very lucky to be able to design a city for a million people in uh, India, south of New Delhi, where I learned how to design and to get built a city that uses 50% en less energy, 50% less water than any conventional city. And we did this in the third world with very, very limited technological means. Today I'm going to be talking about revitalizing Gary, Indiana. Because after I came back from India in 2012, the question was, well, that was great, designing a city on a greenfield site with an uh, infinite amount of private capital to build a new city. How would I go about revitalizing American cities that um, must radically transform themselves, absolutely radically transform themselves, if they are going to be the net contributor to the environment rather than the net negative that they are to the environment today. And as the world leaders are signing today the Paris Agreement on climate change and committing themselves to certain targets, there is absolutely no way that we're going to get there and get beyond that point if we don't rebuild our cities. So I'll be talking also about how private capital, private enterprise can lead in this transformation that we should not be waiting for government to take the lead because it really doesn't have the resources to do so. And I'll be talking about that in Gary, just 30 miles from here. And Paul later will be talking about how private capital is bringing new cities around the world. So I was asked through actually an introduction by Paul Doherty to lead the effort to revitalize Gary, Indiana. And I had been on my soapbox you know, for a few years claiming that I sort of had a way, or at least I thought, a pathway to revitalize American cities. And it turns out that Richard Daly, the former mayor of Chicago, had been working in Gary consulting in Gary over a four-year period. And he came to the conclusion, after helping Gary over that period of time, that the public entity alone could not solve the problem. And Richie Daly and his partners suggested to Gary that they themselves would set up a private entity, a private company that we call Mayaco. And that private company would bring venture investment to Gary, Indiana, to the city as a whole, and we would become a partner with the city in its transformation. So the venture capital is coming to Gary to unlock unrealized value that the city itself, the government itself, whether state or federal, is not able to do. So where is Gary? I mean, almost everybody here knows because we drive past it all the time on the Skyway, but it's 30 miles south of Chicago. Uh, like any other real estate, the basic law that applies is location, 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 and location. And it's a fact that every train or every truck that crosses the United States either goes through Gary, Indiana, or Memphis, Tennessee. These are the logistics hubs of the United States. So if we look a little closer at Gary, you know, the U.S. Steel sits right on the lake. Um, it was the engine that created Gary. Uh, today we wish it were not on the lake, but it is. Um, it has a new airport. It is in the process of develop, developing a port. 
There's a green ring you see around it, and the green ring is this amazing ecology, either historic sand dunes or wetlands along the Calumet River. That was the former coastline of Lake Michigan. It has one of the richest urban ecologies of any city in America. And in the very heart of it, the yellow oval is Broadway. Broadway is the main street, the main drag, and it was the heart of the city. Um, industry versus ecology has always been the challenge of Gary. Um, when U.S. Steel started setting up shop, there really was no consciousness about the natural preservation of resources, so they leveled the dunes. But I also learned that a large part of the dune lands in Chicago were moved to Chicago to raise the city several feet downtown in the loop because of the constant flooding in the city. So we may very well be sitting on top of Gary right now. The city was leveled and moved to Chicago. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. So the challenge is to reinvent Gary, not as industry in opposition with nature, but as the city in balance with nature. That is our challenge. So here's Broadway in 1959. Michael Jackson was born in 1958 in Gary, Indiana. The population was 220,000 people. There was about 40,000 people working at U.S. Steel at the time. Um, it was the sort of workshop of America. And this is Broadway that was, you know, 1950 car, 50s cars just packed, standing room only, down Broadway. And today, this is Broadway. There's nobody there. There's absolutely nobody there. You almost never see anybody walking on the street. Everybody has moved out of the center of the city. The buildings are abandoned. The only people downtown are the people working in government offices. That's all that there is. So it's gone from 220,000 to 80,000 today. It's no longer the steel belt, it's the rust belt. And there is massive, massive disinvestment in the city. However, there is the good side to this, and those of us who drive past it don't see this, but there are very, very strong neighborhoods in Gary that have maintained themselves despite all the challenges. There is a very strong pride of place, and there is an extremely enlightened leadership in Gary, uh, starting with the mayor and her staff, most of them Harvard graduates, Yale graduates, born in Gary, have come back and want to turn the city around. And they're very courageous. I've never heard them say that they can't do anything. I've never heard them say that it's too much. I've only heard them say, we're such a deep hole, we're in such a deep hole that we're going to have to do unbelievable things to pull ourselves out. So they're absolutely aware that they must get on board with radical change. Uh, most, much of the city is actually uh, blighted. This is a typical, typical scene in Gary. There's about 40% of the city that literally has to be torn down. Um, Arky Works, Wasted Market, which they've demonstrated how it might work in Chicago. We'd like to bring Arky Works and Wasted Market to Gary because we have to recycle an entire city, not just a house. We have to recycle an entire city. And the answer is not dumping it in new landfill. So this is a map of vacant property in Gary. Everything green is vacant. The largest green areas are part of the natural ecological preserve that ring the city. Much of those were formerly built on, but they are no longer and they will remain green. And much of the other green dotted all over the city is those 120,000 people who left and just walked away from their property. They walked away, they couldn't sell. There's no value, there's zero value. Today there's zero value. Now this is the tax delinquent property on the 
tax rolls or lack of tax rolls today. It's 12,000 parcels, 20% of the city is tax delinquent. So what is the private venture Mayaco going to do? And how is it going to leverage um, venture capital? Um, well, first of all, we're going to partner with the city over the entire city. Our first ask is to help tear the city down. It's not to build the city, it's to tear the city down. Because all new, all property values will increase ultimately when we can destroy the blight. The value will not begin to come back until we can tear down the blight. So our first task is to concentrate on the core of the city, the Broadway area. And we're planning in the first year to acquire 5,000 properties along with the city in partnership with the city, tear them down, consolidate them into larger parcels so that we can re-begin the rebuilding, redevelopment process. So how are we going to bin, begin to think about that? And this is, where, this is where I, standing on my soapbox, start. And I firmly believe, I absolutely passionately believe, that the fundamental transformation of our cities from now into the future is nature itself. I no longer believe that the city is a citadel with nature around it, but the two are completely and must be interspersed. And if we simply take one problem that all of our cities have, whether they're Los Angeles or Chicago or Gary, we have massive stormwater issues. In LA, we let all the stormwater run off and we have no water to drink. In the old turn of the century industrial cities, we made the tragic mistake of combining our stormwater and our sewers into the same pipe. If you drive around Gary today on a rainy day, every single street is flooded because that system, even with only 80,000 population, cannot absorb stormwater. The only way we can solve the problem is the way Philadelphia has, and that is to institute, and Gary is totally on board with this, is 100% capture of stormwater through green infrastructure. So our first move is to cross-connect the green link, which wraps around the city, but doesn't touch any of the neighborhoods, by creating a network of green that crosses the city, defines cities, and connects to schools and community facilities so that from any point of the city I can get into a green system and I can walk or I can cycle to any other part of the city. So I can go from an automobile oriented city to a pedestrian oriented city and I can absorb stormwater in the process. But I have to recapture value. If the value of my property today, my residential property is zero, and if I remove blight, then if I can bring a park to the neighborhood, I therefore increase value farther. It's an absolute known fact that if houses face a park, they maintain their value and have a greater value over time. So nature can solve our problems, but they can also raise value. And it's what we know about green infrastructure, green infrastructure everywhere, to bring the city back to life. And here we are very lucky to have such a powerful natural ecology in Gary that we can weave it throughout the city. And to my absolute surprise, the leadership in Gary said, we can't wait. We can't wait to tear the city down, large parts of it, and we can't wait for nature to come back. And I thought this was an amazing enlightened attitude. Um, the movement network, right now it's all about highways. It's highways wrapping around the city. It's all about the car. But the great potential of Gary is the South Shore Railroad. It's one of the few remaining intercity commuter rails in the United States. The trip to Gary today is one hour. 
with a few minor fixes on that rail, that trip will be reduced to 35 minutes. So I can get to the heart of Gary, Indiana, probably in the same time it takes me to get to Evanston. And all of a sudden, we have a new equation. All of a sudden, we have a new equation, particularly if we can improve the quality of life in the city. And then our next challenge, our great challenge, and there's no easy answers to this, but if we start with U.S. Steel that had 40,000 jobs and today has 3,000 jobs, and if I look at the other TAN areas on the city, TAN are the current employment areas in the city. They're extremely underproductive. Many of them are brownfield sites. And a good number of them are on floodplains, and they, they're going out of business anyhow because of the constant flooding. So how do we bring new jobs to Gary? And despite the large amount of land, so much of that employment is thoroughly underperforming. Will U.S. Steel stay? Well, we don't know. It may not. Um, if it does, we'll recapture part of the lakefront. That will be an enormous transformation. But part of the work of Mayako is to transform entire neighborhoods. And we believe that we are going to take underperforming neighborhoods where 70, 80% of that neighborhood is already blighted and in the right locations convert it to employment use versus residential use. Uh, there's about 1,000 acres that we can turn from abandoned residential to future employment. <coughs> and being the logistics hub of the United States, we should have ample opportunity to bring jobs back to the city and help in the process of rejuvenation. So I'll wrap it up here. The process, it's private capital getting the ball rolling, tearing the city down, sharing in the, in the increased value as the city grows. That is the profit motive to be a partner in the city. And then as the ball gets rolling, we will bring new urban technologies to rebuild the city in ways that we today even can't quite imagine. And listening to Peter Diamandis last night, as far ahead as we think we're, I'm thinking today, I realize I haven't begun to think about how Gary could set the stage for a new urban model, not just in terms of private capital and how it's being deployed, but in terms of design and technology transforming our cities.